alright if you love me It's alright if you don't I'm not afraid of you running away from me I get the feeling you won't Break down now, go ahead and give it to me Break down, honey, take me through the night Break down now, stand in here, can't you see? Break down, it's alright It's alright Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Video Notes from Mr. Flugum's General Chemistry class. That's right, this is for Gen Chem. And these are the notes for the week of October 9th. So uh, these are going to go in your notebook on page number 26. So go ahead and get your notebooks out and let's get started. All right, folks, so what we're talking about today is electron configurations. Basically, what we're trying to do here is show how electrons are organized within certain atoms and elements. So you can see right over here is an electron configuration for oxygen, which has eight electrons, right? So because it's element number eight, right? Now, what this shows is this. I'm going to underline in red the principal electron levels, right? So those are our main energy levels for the electrons, right? And remember, the electrons that are in level 2 are going to be much farther away and have more energy than the electrons in level 1. Now, I'm going to under underline or circle the sublevels here. Okay, we've got S, S, and P, right? Those are our sublevels. And remember, level 1 only has one, um, one sublevel in it, the S level. Level two has S and P. And finally in green, I'll point little arrows here. That tells you the number of electrons in each of those sublevels. All right, so that is how an electron configuration gets notated. Now, if you're doing some big atom like, I don't know, gold or something that has 70, 79 um, electrons, you're going to have a much longer notation. And eventually we'll get to the point where we should be able to do something like that, even though it may not be that fun. All right, folks, so there's some basic rules when we start talking about atoms. One is the alpha principle, right? It means atoms fill electron levels from their lowest level to their highest, okay? So S orbitals always fill first. And then P fills second. Okay, so um, if you've got more than one orbital, suborbital in a level, okay, S and P fill first, then D, and then F. But the D and F orbitals are kind of complicated. So I'll teach you a trick in class. It's kind of a little bit complex to explain over video notes. The other thing that's helpful when you're doing these electron configurations is this, is the highest principal energy level right, the highest electron energy level, okay, is equal to the period in the periodic table. So if it's on the second row, right, the second period, for example, oxygen is, right, in the second period, then its highest energy level is going to be 2. All right, so here's, here's a question for you. Could you start to do this? Will you step out and try it? So let's do a couple together and see if we can start to figure this out. Let's see electron configuration for neon. Well, two things we need to know about neon. One is this, neon is element number 10. So that means it has 10 electrons in it, right? And also, we need to know this, that neon is in the second row or the second period. Okay, so it's in period two. So we know this, our highest energy level is going to be two and we need to get 10 electrons. So let's start out. Remember, alpha principle, start from the bottom and work up, right? So we've got this, 1s2, right? Then we go like this. Remember, s fills before p, 2s2, and then 2p, 6. Now let's count. 2, 4, plus 6, that gives me 10 electrons. This is the electron configuration for neon, okay? Let's try another one together real quick, just for fun. Let's do aluminum. 
So aluminum is element number 13, so it has 13 electrons, right? And also it is in the third period. So that means that our highest energy level is going to be 3. So let's start with the first, first level and work our way until we get 13 electrons. So here we go. We're going to do this, right? 1s2. Okay, that's all there is in the one level, right? 2s2. All right, so cool. There's four. And we've got this, right? 2p6. Okay, now we got to get to the third level, right? 3, and remember s fills first. 3s. Well, let's count how many we have here. We have 2, 4, 6, there's 10. Only two electrons in s, though, right? So that's 2, 4, 6, 10, 11, 12. Or one short, so it must be this 3p1. Okay, so there's aluminum, right? Aluminum's electron configuration. All right, last one here is phosphorus. I want you to try this on your own, but I will give you a couple pieces of information. One is this phosphorus is element number 15, so it has 15 electrons. Okay. And it is in the third period. So it must have a third level um, energy level, right? We'll try that one on your own. We'll talk about it in class on Thursday or Monday. All right, so we're going to do also talk about a different way to write electron configurations, and that is with a diagram. Okay, so a diagram is different than just the straight up electron configuration, right? Because the diagram actually shows how electrons fill up that sublevel. Okay, so here's a couple examples for you, and then we'll talk about some rules that go with this and be done. All right, first example is this is boron. Boron is element number five, so it has five electrons, right? So here we go. 1s has two electrons. Now, the way we represent the electrons is by drawing little arrows in here. So there's one, two. Sorry about the sloppiness. It's hard on this thing. 2s, there's one, two. Okay, now that's four electrons, right? Well, boron has five, and uh, it's a second period element. So let's go to P. There we go. So there's boron's electron configuration diagram. Just to give you another example, lithium. Lithium's element number three has three electrons in it. So it looks like this, and it's in period two, right? So there's one, there's two, and there's three. So if you notice, in both of these cases, we have atoms that um, have a number of electrons that do not completely fill all of the orbitals that are available to them. And that's important to know because it leads to understanding why atoms and certain elements behave the way they do. Okay, so there's a couple of rules that we got to deal with here, right? Not only is there the alpha principle that we work from the bottom up, right? But there's these two rules. There's Hund's rule, right? One electron must occupy each suborbital before a second is added. I'll show you that in a second. And then we've got the Pauli exclusion principle, right? where electrons in the same orbital must have opposite spins. So here's the deal, let's do nitrogen. Nitrogen's element number seven, and it's in the second period, so it has seven electrons. So here we go, all right? Now, like I showed you with boron and lithium before, right? We go opposite to spins with arrows, right? That's the Pauli exclusion principle right there, right? Opposite spins, okay? And we'll do the same thing in the 2s level where we only have two electrons, right? Now, that's one, two, three, four electrons, right? I need three more. So here's the deal. Here's where Hund's rule comes into play, okay? I have to have one electron in each suborbital before I can begin to put a second. So this is the correct uh, electron configuration diagram for nitrogen, okay? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons, and there's one in each p suborbital, right? Because we must fill each suborbital with one before we move on. Okay, here we go. Let's check out oxygen. That has eight electrons. Okay, so we'll start in one s like this, right? Two s. Fill that one up. That gives us 
one, two, three, four electrons, right? And then let's go to 2p. So here we go, right? Follow Hun's rule, okay? Make sure that we fill each suborbital. Now that only gives us seven electrons. Where does the eighth go? Well, it goes right here. It begins to fill up the second electron in the first p orbital, right? And it has an opposite spin as the other as the other electron because that is Pauli's exclusion principle. Now eventually down the road we'll be doing more and more of these and we'll be showing you maybe ones that have an error and asking you to identify the mistake. All right, But these two rules here are really important when they come to electron configuration diagrams. Okay so just to summarize things here real quick as you uh, wrap up this video notes some things that you're going to need to be able to do is this. You're going to need to be able to read and understand electron configurations, right? If it's like this, what does it mean? Okay, how many electrons are there? What element is it? What do the letters and numbers mean? We're also, you also need to, this is a kind of a simple thing, but know the difference between an electron configuration like this and electron configuration diagrams, which we were just doing on the last slide, right? And last but not least, you're going to have to know these. And you're going to have to know them for the test, all right? You need to know the alpha principle, Hund's rule, and the Pauli exclusion principle, okay? Remember alpha, bottom up, Hund's rule, fill each suborbital before putting a second electron, and the Pauli exclusion is those electrons have to have opposite spins. Well, thanks for tuning in, folks. I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.